Performance Huawei i G8 Review Benchmarks Huawei i has always been particularly persistent in pushing its home-brewed high silicon Kirin chips, perhaps even to the point of stubbornness. It is hardly a secret that the chipset family in question has a tendency of underperforming and has often been plagued by poor optimization and coupling with low-end GPUs. For Huawei i's sake, we sincerely hope that the highly praised Kirin 950 will finally put an end to this unfavorable trend, but currently it seems like a good idea to steer away from Kirin if performance is what you are after. However, the OEM does make exceptions in its SoC choices from time to time especially when it comes to mid-range solutions. The Huawei IG8 is a perfect example. Just like the P8 LITE, it utilized a Qualcomm Snapdragon 615 chipset, a pretty widespread mid-range platform. It is hardly a powerhouse, but has proven its worth more than once in a long line of excellent handsets. This made it a lot easier for us to pick a selection of hardware rivals to the GA. Even when throwing in the extra requirements for a 5.5-inch Full HD display and 2GB or 3GB of RAM, the list still remains long with devices like the Apo R7S, which we just recently reviewed, the HTC Desire 826, Samsung Galaxy A7 and Motorola Moto X Play. As it so happens, the latter two also fall into the price range of the Huawei IG8, which currently retails for around 350 euros to 400 euros. We also made sure to explore other viable options at that price point and, it turns out, there are just as abundant. You can easily pick up a flagship device form last year for that kind of money, like the LG G3, HTC One, M8, or Samsung Galaxy S5, all still pretty relevant, despite their age. Other alternatives include the ASUS Zenfone 2, as well as quite a wide selection of Sony devices in all sizes, depending on your preference, like the Spiria Z3 Compact, M4 Aqua or C5. Of course, we made sure to include the other Huawei I devices, we have been talking so much about in the benchmark scores, just to see how the G8 sizes up in terms of performance against its bigger sibling the Mate S, as well as the MATE 7 and Honor 7, both of which also happen to bear a similar price tag. While, the Snapdragon 615 undoubtedly has plenty of power to run the G8 smoothly and the aforementioned observations about the Kirin line of chips is still true, it is only fair to point out that amidst all the aforementioned Huawei I devices with their Kirin 923 or 935 chipsets, the Snapdragon 615 is actually least powerful both in terms of CPU and GPU. All of them use standard ARM cores, like the Cortex A53, but while the Kirin 935 has 4 units clocked at 2.2 GHz and another 4 at 1.5 GHz, Inside the Snapdragon 615, the more powerful four work at a frequency of 1.5 GHz and are complemented by another cluster at only 1.2 GHz. Mostly the same analysis can be made in the GPU department. The Mali T628, a high silicon favorite, is hardly known for its outstanding performance, but it is still more capable than the Adreno 405 inside the GA. This all said, the Huawei IG8 is, by design, less powerful than its sibling, at least on paper that is. Still, the devil lies in the details or in this case, rather, the optimization, something Huawei I has been struggling with for some time now. This is where working with popular hardware, such as the Qualcomm chipset, can really make a difference when you take into account all the pre-existing OS optimization that you can benefit from. The G8 finds itself in precisely this peculiar position where it often tends to outperform its siblings, despite the lower-end hardware. Let's dive into the benchmarks to explore this further.